Good afternoon, and there we go. Welcome to my daily chat, my daily exploration. This episode number five hundred twenty-eight, and the topic today is how to rebuild after the end. Um, this is kind of a P2, part two of what I talked about yesterday. But before I jump into that, let me introduce myself. Why I do these talks, and then get into the content. My name is Barry Selby. I am a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert. And I help strong, successful women find balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the Divine Feminine, which is what inspired these almost two years' worth of talks called Messages from the Masculine to Inspire Your Feminine Heart. And so every day around 5 p.m. Pacific time, like today, I do these talks on themes around relationship, romance, masculine and feminine polarity, challenges, successes, joy, love, self-love, etc., 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 Yesterday I was talking because of what's been happening this weekend and this last few days um, with the fires in Malibu and in the West Valley that have impacted a lot of us, um, indirectly or directly. Um, myself indirectly, because a lot of friends of mine have gone through some challenges with losing their homes and being um, uh, evacuated. And in fact yesterday we were dealing with some of the smoke here, which is nothing compared to what they were dealing with, but we were definitely smelling and seeing the effects of the fire on a small scale down on the hit where, we're at, where I live. So I did a talk yesterday about um, how do you recover after something. <laughs> Let's look at the talk from yesterday. But this is kind of a part two because I want to speak further into the solution. Because yesterday we were speaking a lot about the problems and the downfalls, particularly around relationships, but also about situations in life that can be challenging. And I talked about some of the cl some of the cures, but I want to speak more to that solution side of the conversation today because. I'm still, you know, it, it ain't over yet for my friends, certainly, and people I know and friends of friends who are going through the challenges of not being able to get home because of the um, evacuation orders and the red flag um, effects is going on and the fact that some people already lost their homes. So what came to me was like, well, how do you do the, how do you rebuild? How do you restart? How do you get back on your feet again? But I want to use it on the spin about relationship again because that's my area and also because it may help you on a more personal level because if you're watching this from the other side of the world, the fires won't affect you directly, of course. Um, and if, even if they do, they might, they might, even if the fires do affect you, this might help you on some level too. So, and put it, I'll just say this: I'm a solution-oriented type of guy. So, when people bring their problems to me, my focus is on how I can help them alleviate, reduce, remove the sol the problems. They can actually be solution-oriented and get what they want. So, this is kind of a peek into that part of my life or part of my work. And I spoke yesterday about how self-love, forgiveness, um, compassion, and other things were useful skills to have. And I want to expand on those a bit more because for many people, they don't even know what those are, first of all. And secondly, they may not know, may not know how to use them in their lives. And I mean that in a very direct way. Um, so how do I say this? I'm using, I'm using the talk of the disaster or the... Or the um, recovery from in this context about a really bad breakup or a divorce or um, tragic loss of a partner in some way shape or form I mean there, there are people out there know who are widows or widowers from the past relationships not just from a breakup but like an ending that wasn't in their control and for some people that abrupt ending is traumatic so they, would, they, actually, would choo they actually would choose never to recover and I'm using that word intentionally because for some people, again, some people, it's hard to, it's hard to quantify how many, so I can't say 70% of the population or 50% of divorcees or whatever that is. I can only use the word some because it's generic because I don't have it, I don't have the statistics. I don't know if anybody does, frankly. But a lot of people who are the survivors of a breakup in the sense of a tra traumatic ending or even a tragic ending sometimes feel on some level that they carry some guilt around. And they actually choose to live in pain and suffering as a penance that they feel they should give because their partner died or, or was or rejected them or left. There's, there's a craziness in this, but also and there's also a logic in it too. And I'll start with the logic first, because <laughs> that's where it starts. Because for some people, there's a sense of responsibility in a relationship that if the relationship fails or ends badly, again, somebody leaves them or there's a death uh, you know that you become widowed or widow widowed widowed works both genders 
there's this feeling somehow that you have, you're somehow responsible. And so the logic means that if you're responsible, you should therefore feel guilty because you're a caring person. Oh, I remember this piece. This is actually from a school teaching. There's the, we are, we're wide, strange people. If you're someone who doesn't care about anything, then you'll never feel guilty. And there are people in the world like that. Not you, I trust. But there are people who basically believe that stuff happens, no big deal. If I screw things up, it's fine. You have an issue with me, no problem. And it's not so much an ever elevation as much as a simple ignorance. It's a fact of like, don't care, don't worry about it, have no care for anything, and so never feel any guilt or any sort of um, self-recrimination. But most people, thankfully, are caring people. So when they are the left behind from the relationship ending, there's a tendency to become responsible, I should say overly responsible for the breakup. So what we will do, because I've done it myself in the past, not anymore thankfully, but in the past I did this, where we would take on responsibility for somehow that what happened was because of us. And therefore, we need to feel guilty and, play, and pay penance on some level for an indefinite period of time, maybe the rest of our lives. In the case of losing a partner to death, there's a sense of guilt that can be carried that can go for the rest of our lives. I strongly suspect, just had a hit on this, my father, who's been widowed now for six years, is still carrying some of that around himself. Not intentionally and not overtly and not verbally, but he's carrying some sort of responsibility on his own part, feeling resentful, not resentful, but guilty, because I know he feels like he wanted to be gone first and he wants to leave to be with my mum. You know, they've been together 60 years, which is a long time. But even if people have been together less than that, there's this, this almost overwhelming and subconscious in a way desire to carry on this um, penance that somehow they can't be happy anymore like they must carry on the guilt and they must be ashamed and therefore they can't be in a happy relationship because somehow they'll be cheating on the memory of the person they lost that sort of thing I think you got my point and the, the, and the harsh reality is first of all the person who left I would strongly suspect doesn't care for that anymore. They may in fact, they in fact, they may in fact be in a place where, I mean, my belief system would be spirit, spiritual belief, is that where there is a better place, in which case they'll look upon you with compassion. So my suggestion is to do the same for yourself. If you're someone's been carrying around this resentment, or this guilt rather, this feeling of somehow that you're responsible for what happened, stop it. Seriously, the reality is that what happened, happened, and unless you directly caused it, and I mean directly, blatantly caused that to end, you don't have anything to worry about. So love yourself and be compassionate with yourself. Be able to care for yourself and give yourself a break. It's one of the pieces of the puzzle. Now, if somehow you believe you carried that, you did cause that to happen, then you're carrying around probably a bunch of judgments that are inaccurate. And judgment, as I teach with my work, is in my book and what I've learned from my own journey, is a... Um, unnecessary wedge we put between ourselves and love that's pretty good an unnecessary wedge you put between yourself and love that's what that's what guilt is and so is resentment by the way it's a whole other conversation whole other conversation excuse me I'm English gamma right so in this journey of learning to of, or rather this journey of wanting to heal and be compassionate with yourself some of these judgments are in the way of that because you have this rule that you broke this violation you did, this horrible thing that you did to your ex-partner that you feel responsible for. For example, there are these situations where, um, and I, I know a couple of times would happen, where somebody's partner died, and because the last thing that they said, the last thing they had was an argument and they were yelling at each other, this person carries the guilt of that round for the rest of their lives, going, if only I'd said nicer things, I wish I'd never said that, I never yelled at them and that sort of stuff. That's the judgments that we carry there are wedges between, again, ourselves and love. So the key about moving forward, the key about releasing this, is you've got to be willing to forgive yourself. I talked about this yesterday, but this is, a, this is a part two of that. And the truth is, when you do learn how to forgive yourself, you free yourself, you actually let yourself off the hook for over-responsibility for something that's not even yours to worry about. And forgiveness really but comes down to this simple truth, that you've been judging yourself for something you did, a behavior, or a, or, a, um, or a conversation, or things you did, and you don't need to anymore. When you learn to forgive yourself, and it comes down to forgiving yourself for what you, I can say this, 
You're forgiving yourself for the judgments you placed about what you did, not about who you are, because who you are is, is a perfect divine being, if you want to get that spiritual with me. So by learning how to forgive yourself for the judgment you placed against yourself for something you did, you can actually release yourself from that um, well, self-imposed self -imposed jail. You can actually unlock the door and walk free. When you forgive yourself for those judgments, you become a free person again, so you can love again, can come back to self-love, and learn how to be whole again. It's probably one of the most pivotal pieces of people's lives when they discover they don't need to carry that guilt anymore. It's a big piece of the work I do and a big piece of the work people need to do a lot of times from the past um, negative experiences in relationships. Now, it's true in business too. It's also true in other areas. But part of this journey is, that, and I'll just use an example for people who go through um, circumstance judgments because we can say, well, um, if I just only had insurance, my house, I would have money on the house that burned down. Or if I had known it was coming, I would have cut back all the underbrush, come to my friends in the fire zones. And some people have been carrying around these judgments that somehow they're responsible for the house burning down because they didn't prepare properly, they didn't put sprinklers in, they didn't clear the underbrush, they didn't um, trim the trees back, they didn't do whatever it was, and they blame themselves for that mistake. Now here's the thing, whether or not they did that wrong, hindsight is a painful master, mistress in a way, or master depending on your preference. And in those situations, I highly recommend that if you've gone to that place where you wish you, you could have, would have, should have stuff, it's time to forgive yourself on that too. Because that self-flagellation uh, is, is unnecessary. So again, this is an add-on to yesterday's talk about um, getting over those past ch um, challenges, traumas. I forget what the last week yesterday's was. This is part two, so I hope it's been of use to you. Um, I want to do a quick one to remind you and a couple of things I'll let you know in the com I'll put in the comments the links again because again one of the biggest tools I recommend is self-love it's so simple but it's, it's so not easy for a lot of people to remember that loving yourself is one of the keys to freedom so if you let yourself out of your own self-imposed jail loving yourself is one of the steps so I'll put the self-love practice in the comments you can check it out and download it and start using it also if you're dealing with some guilt and, and repressed feelings of of upset about your past relationships before you get to your next one I highly recommend you get some help and that's where I recommend my services I'll put a link in the comments for that as well which is my discovery session which is my gift to you we can talk and see where you are and help you get moving forward the bottom line I want to make sure you get <coughs> excuse me is that you know that you are better than the judgments you placed against yourself that you know you're worthy of love and what's in the way doesn't have to stop you because it doesn't have to. And forgiveness tools out there, I've got a bunch in my book, I've got to talk about it in my work. There's a lot you can do to free yourself from that past trap. So please, if your feeling is stuck, know that you can shift out of it. If you're feeling trapped, know you have the key to unlock it. You can get out of the jail, you can put yourself in and be free to love and live fully again. And that, and here ended the lesson. Is a Sunday after all, we're gonna do that do that woo woo stuff for a second um, so again I'll put the links in the comments for those two things this is my Facebook live for Sunday um, hence the casual attire um, once again let you know that I do this every day at 5pm Pacific time on Facebook live first it goes into my YouTube channel after that and then goes into my podcast I'll give you the links for those places and by the way all my social media is my name which is Barry Selby so you can find me on YouTube and other places too first of all I put these YouTube re sorry these Facebook lives into my business page for replay which is barryselby.author I also then put them onto my YouTube channel, Barry Selby is the channel, and the playlist is Messages from the Masculine. Finally, and slowly, <laughs> I've said this so many times, I put the audio versions of my Facebook Lives onto my podcast, which is Messages from the Masculine on iTunes, and you can subscribe to there and my, subscribe to my, my YouTube channel, and you can download and listen to the audios there. I appreciate you watching, and I hope you take this to heart. This is a powerful piece of learning that some of you have yet to learn. And I'm encouraging you to take this on because you can change your life, change your relationship status, and change your self-support structure so it lifts you up rather than pushing you down. I'm here for you. That's the way, that's my work. It's about inspiring and lifting you up so you have what you want. If you want more of that, reach out to me. I'll talk to you again tomorrow at 5 p.m. Pacific time. Check the links in the comments. And any questions, comments, please put them in below and I'll respond after I sign off. Thank you for watching. See you tomorrow at 5 p.m. Pacific time. Same time, same bat channel. See you then.